In the latest news, there's a hungry gut gene marker apparently. Let's talk about how it will impact obesity in the world of GLP-1s. Welcome to The Downsized. My name is Lorraine Durham and this is Christopher Durham. <laughs> and we are The Downsized. Please like and subscribe to our channel. This is a little bit different than we normally do. This is not our weekly news it's setup. Ex extra news. Yeah, it's commentary, we'll say. It's, it's, right. a, it's a different format. We're going to try something, so let us know how you like it. Uh, you see we're in a slightly different uh, environment, slightly different setup. Got some nice soft chairs here. I found this press release, and I'm not really sure whether it's good news, bad news, or just a marketing ploy aimed at obese people in the GLP-1 community, so we'll talk about it. Before we talk about it, though, let me jump in and tell you what the press release said. There is a risk score biomarker that identifies a hungry gut phenotype, which might help determine whether GLP-1 semaglutide medications such as Wagovi are more likely to help people lose weight. Okay, that sounds good. So if we could do science, it might help us. Maybe, maybe not. Let's talk about it though. According to research presented at the Digestive Disease Week 2024 conference this past week, Phenomics Sciences, a biotechnology company dedicated it to leveraging data intelligence and obesity treatment unveiled the results of an independent study conducted by Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. Reputable clinic, certainly. The study showcased the clinical efficacy of the My Phenome Hungry Gut Test in predicting response to a semaglutide, a popular weight loss medication, as we all know. So we'll no go big, the right. Ozempic is semaglutide. Right. No big surprise here. Dr. Andreas Acosta, MD, PhD, co-founder of Phenomics and associate professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic, so the company and the Mayo Clinic have a connection there, was part of the team chosen to present these findings at the presidential plenary session. Dr. Maria Daniela Hurtado Andrada, MD, PhD, and endocrinologist and assistant professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic, alongside Sima Fansa, MD, a fellow at Mayo Clinic, led the session. Lots of degrees there. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, they should know what they're talking about. The research titled Evaluation of a Machine Learning Gene Risk Score Biomarker for Predicting Semaglutide Response recruited 84 individuals with obesity who were prescribed semaglutide. So it's not a giant study. Utilizing the My Phenome Test, participants underwent assessment to determine their hungry gut phenotype status. Based on the machine learning gene risk score, this categorization identified individuals as either hungry gut positive or hungry gut negative. Now, I feel like Lorraine and I could probably tell you ours already, but we'll see how it goes. The hungry gut phenotype denotes patients experiencing altered satiety where food digestion is accelerated, leading to increased hunger shortly after eating. As we know, weight loss medications can yield substantial results. Nonetheless, clinical trials have shown notable diversity in patient responses, so different people respond differently. The latest findings from this study unveiled a stark contrast in outcomes. Those identified as a hungry gut positive achieved a remarkable 19.5% weight loss after 12 months, whereas their negative counterparts experienced only a 10% total body weight loss. This study underscores the significance, or what they believe to be the significance, of the My Phenome test in minimizing outcome disparities by pinpointing patients who are predisposed to respond more favorably to a semaglutide. Dr. Hurtado Andrada said, our data supports that obesity has a strong genetic and biological basis that varies within patients living with obesity. Furthermore, our results underscore the potential of individualizing therapy to improve outcomes that will ultimately translate into better health. Obesity phenotypes are the combination of genes and other biometric data that cause obesity, first discovered by Phenomics's co-founders. Using the My Phenome test and the company's sophisticated algorithms, providers can more precisely develop treatment plans, include a diet intervention specific to hungry gut and semaglutide medications. The researchers classified various types of obesity phenotypes that could enhance weight loss outcomes. These phenotypes were divided into four distinct types. The first, hungry brain, which means they consume too many calories without feeling full. The second, hungry gut, which means eating a full meal but feeling hungry again soon after. The third, which is emotional hunger, eating in response to an emotional trigger. And the fourth, slow burn, burning calories too slowly. The researchers have developed a genetic test that not only identifies variations in weight loss outcomes, but also helps physicians target the root cause of obesity. They believe that this test could revolutionize healthcare by accurately identifying individuals who will respond positively to semaglutide. 
So, what do you think? Is it revolutionary? Is it okay? Well, let's 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 recap that very scientific sounding mm -hmm. study. Okay, a company that sells genetic testing did the research. Well, no, the Mayo Clinic did the research, but the people work for the Mayo Clinic and the company. Basically, they did research on these 84 people with the assumption that obesity is a disease. Right. And there are genetic markers that can tell us, even within the disease of obesity, what exactly your particular issue is. Right. So if you have hungry gut, your gut empties faster than other people's, or you don't get the signal that you're full, that was the gut. No, hungry gut, your gut empties faster. Your if gut you have empties. hungry brain, you don't get So, it. yeah, hungry brain, which I identified with right off, is the marker that says your brain never gets the, the signal that you're full. Like, I never, before this medication, except on like Thanksgiving and Christmas, ever got the signal that I'm full. The other one was emotional eating, which I don't know how they can have a genetic marker for emotional eating because lots of people eat when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're glad, when they're, you know, celebration. Well, it's that line between nurture and nature. How much of this is controlled by genes and how much of it is controlled by our life experience and what we've yeah. learned. But they're talking about a things. genetic marker right. for emotional eating. Eh, I don't know about yeah, that Yeah, I don't know. And then the fourth one was slow burn. So you burn calories too slowly. So you have a genetic predisposition to burn calories so slowly that you don't burn as many calories in a day as say a average weight person. Right. Okay. I think it's very interesting that you can subdivide the disease of obesity into specific genetic markers, hungry gut, hungry brain, mm -hmm. emotional hunger, and slow burn. I think that's very interesting. Yep, I'm with you there. Uh, this company that is doing the genetic testing strikes me like a 23andMe place where you put your saliva into tubes. Yeah, it that's off the way it works. They... Same kind of deal. So, and we don't know how much this costs. I mean, 23andMe is like, I don't know, $99 or mm -hmm. something. I've done the 23andMe. You have not done the 23andMe. No. And I, can, you know, when I did the 23andMe, it does have some things on there that are weight related and i wish there were more things more genetic markers toward that end and maybe this is this new study is a precursor to including that or getting specific genetic testing to see why you're fat <laughs> why you have obesity what particular kind of obesity that you have or ideally how to help treat it yeah, I mean, I guess they were taking patients who already were taking semaglutide, which is Wagovia Ozempic. Right. And then they tested them for these markers. Well, it turns out, if you have some of these markers, you lost more weight on the semaglutide. That well, kind of just I mean, tells we, me, just go on this, like, right now there's semaglutide and there's terzepatide. Well, I mean, to me, that's kind of the, the fundamental... I won't say problem, because I, I applaud them for doing the genetic work to begin to figure out what exactly is going on. Yeah, no, because I think that's... The good. science hasn't been done. The medicine hasn't been done. I yeah. mean, most people still don't think op obesity is a disease. I had an argument with the lady on a Weight Watchers chat group just the other day telling me, well, you just... <laughs> anyway, so, I yeah, mean, they, to me there's that to overcome. And the more scientific data we can present that says hey, you might have these genetic markers that are causing you to eat more, and here's why. Well, to me, this just feels like a baby step to me. Like, they're not really, they don't really have a product to sell yet, but they really want to. Like, okay, you test me, you tell me I have a hungry gut, which means people that had hungry gut had 20% weight loss, or people who didn't had 10% weight loss. I'm not sure what I'd do with that. No, I'm still going to go on the medication. <laughs> so it doesn't, it doesn't point me to, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think um, I mean, it's that helpful at this point. Maybe in the future when we have 12 different obesity medications from yeah, which to I choose. Yeah, I mean, I could see where so if they tested terzepatide and retitrutide and you know, all these and 
Things that aren't There's available yet. Things that aren't available and the doctor could look at it and go, oh, it turns out you have this phenotype and this phenotype responds better to this, to this drug. this drug. Yeah, well, that'd be great. I wonder if they know this phenotype and genetic makeup is contributing to, causing to, whatever the word is, obesity. Mm-hmm. Can yeah. it also inform diet? Could it also say how I digest things? So if I'm more sensitive to X versus Y, people say they're more sensitive to well, I mean, I carbs, guess, they're more sensitive to whatever. I mean, I guess if you had the slow burn genetic marker, which is burning calories too slowly, mm-hmm. I don't know what you could do to speed that up besides exercise. I don't know. This just feels like a teaser to me. Like, yeah. like there's a kernel of a good idea. Yeah. And maybe if it were 20 bucks, I might pay for it. If it's a hundred dollars, I think most obese people will read these four types and go, "Oh, that's me right there." What do I need to test to tell me? Why do I need to test to tell me that genetically I have I mean, blue a whole lot of hair? people spent money on Twenty Three and Me that had no actual need for it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's that's a <laughs> it's curiosity. That's a people different. Want to know. People want to know where they came from, why they are like mm. they are, and I've always wondered, like, why can I eat? this meal and then my friend ate the same meal and I gave five pounds and she loses five pounds like what there's got to be some kind of genetic code that is dictating how our bodies burn through energy and store fuel well it's that is there something to fast metabolism that yeah I've read different things about metabolism like you know they used to say oh don't do xyz you're going to slow down your metabolism then the the research said well, you can't it, change your metabolism. It is what it is. But to me, it's not really about the word metabolism. It's about does your body process food, store food appropriately? Mm-hmm. And if not, is there a way to adjust that? So call it metabolism, mm-hmm. call it healthy gut. Do you remember when that went on the whatever. fast metabolism diet? Do you remember that? I think that just made you run to the potty quickly, didn't it? No, that was the one where <laughs> you only ate carbs one day and then you only ate protein the next day it was like carb cycling Hmm. so you oh because i remember i would take my little bag of nuts to the girls soccer practice and be like oh you brought snacks for everybody i'm like no this is my snack but anyway i mean because there's been all kinds of uh, the tips to hack the metabolism i certainly have tried to hack my metabolism and tried to make it faster thinking oh well this will help me lose weight I don't really know if you if it's possible to increase or decrease your metabolism. Well, I mean, isn't that is effectively what a GLP one's doing? I mean, it's slowing your slowing digestion, which is metabolism, right? Digestion, so it's slowing down how you're breaking down your food. But I don't really think it's increasing the rate at which you're burning through calories. You're just taking in a lot less calories than you did before. So GLP-1. if you had to give this team at this company, Phenomics, advice. What would you tell them? I think it's interesting. I mean, I think if you send it out at a, like a really cheap price, like a 20 bucks or, I I mean, I've, I've spent way more for products and gotten way less out of them. What do I do with that? I'm not going to go off Terzepatide. No, because right now it's only Semaglutide. The best obesity drug we have right now is Manjaro, Zebbound, Terzepatide. Period. The end. Semaglutide is good. Ogovi, Wagovi, Ozempic, they're good, but you can get 5 to 10% more weight loss on Terzepatide. So why wouldn't I want to just go straight to the top? Period. The end. Let me ask you another question. What concerns would you have about this? Concerns? It's a lab trying to sell a test to fat people to cash in on the obesity epidemic. I do like that they found the four genetic markers, for lack of a phenotype. I don't know. I, I'd never heard the word phenotype before, but genetic marker, I think, is a mm-hmm. good word. I really like that they're identifying types of obesity with within the broader term, just different segments. Mm-hmm. And I think that can be helpful for deciding if you're genetically uh, an emotional eater or genetically you never feel full or genetically you burn through your calories so slowly that your body's just storing them like crazy. I think those could be directions for you to go for treatment 
I would have the same concerns as I'm not sure there's that much value to this test at this point to tell me if I'm fractionally to tell gonna me something perform I already know. a little better on semaglutide and mm -hmm. if I'm significantly overweight I'm gonna try it either way so it doesn't right. really it's, matter right I think at the end of the day they got to do more research they gotta, if, if this is gonna be a test that has value it has to deliver on more than just a couple of percentage points well, on and I think it's different companies and we've talked about different companies entering the GLP-1 market mm -hmm. so it's not just Eli Lilly and Orthonovum Orthonovo Ortho Novo Nordisk <laughs> Novo I think I'm getting it confused with an old birth control pill yep. Novo Nordisk so it's those are like the big two Eli Lilly and Norvo Novo Nordisk Novo Nordisk but other companies are going to say this pie is huge and i want a piece of it yeah and so as more We've and more on that, yeah so as more and more companies come to the table and bring to market these different weight loss drugs a year from now or five years from now more likely we could be sitting here and looking at a choice of 10 different weight loss drugs and at that point i'm 50 pounds overweight and i'm looking at them going well, which one's the best one for me but maybe this genetic testing could help point you in a direction of one versus the other. Right now, it's just such a new concept that, number one, obesity is a disease. Number two, there's genetic markers for obesity, and there's different types of obesity. That's something I've learned all within the past six months. I hope you've enjoyed the conversation. The team of phenomics, bravo. We like to see you doing research. Certainly love to see the Mayo Clinic involved in that, but let's take it to the next level. Let's see where terzepatide is in it and all the new drugs. Let's make this a truly effective tool that can help us you know, stay healthier and lose weight better. But that's the conversation. Chime in in the comments. Tell us what you think. Is this something that you would try? Is it, are they full of shit? Do you like our chairs? Yeah, do you like our chairs? I'm not sure I like sitting like this because I feel like should I sit up? Should I sit back? Yeah, uh, definitely sitting Maybe up is always a, good. I need a pillow. Yeah, we we can get you a pillow. We need some downsized pillows. Sure, we can so. get, get some downsized <laughs> pillows. So you want to close it up? Thanks for watching The Downsized. I'm Lorraine Durham. And I'm Christopher Durham. Please like and subscribe to our channel, The Downsized. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.